Hi everyone, this is Josh with Talk About Trek, and we're going to be back with our kind of part two final thoughts video here for Star Trek Picard Rogue Elements. So um, we got about halfway through of the book, and then we stopped and we did a video on it. And man, we were just in to the real fun meat of this story. So uh, if you haven't watched the first part, or if you haven't read the book, of course, maybe you should go back and do that. Or just listen to me uh, poorly describe it for the next 10 to 12 minutes, because that would be fun too. Uh, so where we last left off with uh, Chris Rios was that he was finally in a place where maybe his debt was paid. He didn't get any money, but he was in his ship, and he was alone again for a while. So let's consult my notes and see where we were at. <clears throat> so uh, back to work and still on the run. Um, what he's doing right now is deciding instead to kind of drink himself to sleep. He's reading a lot of philosophy, and he's discovered that there is a holographic program in his hologram that was programmed by the previous captain, who was uh, Varenginar. And this is basically his depiction of Stovo Kor, which is a Klingon afterlife. And it's this bar filled with all these famous Klingons, and they name drop, you know, Kalas, Gorkhan, uh, Laurel is even thrown in there for Discovery fans. And uh, so he goes in there and is able to actually kind of learn more about the mystery of what Varanganar had, you know, what, what was this little apple trinket, you know, through speaking with Kalas, who was the bartender there. So, <clears throat> so they're learning a little bit more about what is this perch mystery. <clears throat> now, uh, he gets a message, Kivos Faja is back. You kind of thought maybe he was just a bit player in the first part, but no, he's back. He's back for more. And he needs La Serena. He, what he wants to do is hold a, basically a, a big auction. Try to auction off all of his goods to all of his rivals. And he wants to do it on a, a cruiser ship. So they're going to, and uh, what's good for Chris here is he's going to get an upgrade to his ship. So he actually gets uh, like basically a, if you'll notice on the ship, they have these two extra uh, outriggers on the side and in this chapter here they actually explain that that's where they added those on those are not like something that's normal for a kaplan class, kaplan class uh, freighter but he had those added on to give him some extra speed so that was that's what makes la serena you know kind of gives it that little extra little kick so it gets an upgrade you know gets a new paint job it gets cleaned up and they get ready to do an auction to all of these you know famous collectors from all around the galaxy so they have to fly around, pick them all up, and they're all kind of weird characters themselves, you know, just like this weird Fajo is. And uh, there's a few surprises thrown in here. So a few of these collectors that come aboard, uh, one of them is going to be Sovak. So if you guys remember Sovak, I remember Sovak. Sovak. So Sovak was in the very wonderful episode, uh, Captain's Holiday, where Picard went on holiday to Risa, and uh, tangled with this Ferengi met Vash. Uh, so he is back, and it turns out Sovak is Hain's brother that they were looking for in the first half of the book. So Sovak is here to participate in the auction, and he has got a big stake in this thing. So also invited aboard to this auction on Benotes to uh, uh, Rios here is going to be uh, Lizelle, who is after him as well because they stole a bunch of stuff from her dad in the first half of the book. So this auction so far is kind of turning out to be an awkward situation, and he does have to activate his emergency hospitality hologram. And if you guys remember from Picard, he was a very funny one who was always kind of offering to help people, you know, getting in people's faces, uh, and uh, they call him Mr. Hospitality. So they have the auction, uh, but the problem is nobody likes Faso. And everybody's there just to screw them over. So the auction is a complete bust. Uh, nothing gets sold. And everybody's just kind of left standing there with, with no money. But then what happens? Boss Arca shows up. So Boss Arca, if you guys will remember, is, I believe, this, uh, this woman here. So in the beginning of the book, they describe her as someone who, or she says herself, I was right there in the room when Kirk laid it all down. And uh, if you go back and you watch that episode, there's one woman in the room in a red dress when Kirk is given his famous speech on top of the table. So I think that the author meant for this woman to be Boss Arca. 
So that's what I'm saying. So this is Boss Arca here. Now, so she comes on board and basically says, uh, we're going to claim everything here and that's how we're going to, we're going to patch this up. And they, um, <clears throat> so they, Rios has to do something basically. He's got no money. This whole thing has been a bust. He's going to lose his ship. He's going to lose everything. He decides he's going to put his apple up for auction, but he's going to open it first because he's figured out the mystery after talking with the, uh, I think the Klingons and Stovo Corps. So he's figured out the mystery here and he goes into the auction room and he opens it up. And what the apple actually is, <clears throat> is a rare Chang parch. That's right. General Chang captured in um, what is called an actuality. So this parch is a famous holographic artist who makes things called actualities, which basically like captures a moment in hologram form. And this is the moment basically where Chang is sitting down and he's reading uh, a book and you can see off in the distance a great explosion. So it's the moment of the explosion of the Praxis moon. And I'm talking with my hands too much. But it's the moment of the, expo <laughs> the explosion of the Praxis moon, uh, basically caught by this artist Chang, uh, which is very like a very valuable thing. So the bidding goes wild. Everybody wants a piece of the action. Everybody's getting crazy. And I think it gets down to something like 500 million bars of gold press latinum. And the highest big bidder ends up being Fajo himself, who held the auction. So he bids for it and gets it. And in the end, Rios ends up with absolutely nothing. Uh, Fajo bought the thing at his own auction. Rios gets no cut of anything. And, uh, oh, I can't forget this part of the book. This is very fun. So part of the auction here is they have all these collectibles and wonderful things. And one of them is this old car, maybe from like the 1940s or 50s. They call it a torpedo. And it's painted uh, like red and white. And it's a very nice looking car. And they make a point of saying it's got the engine in the back and the trunk in the front. So uh, it's revealed throughout the course of these chapters that, at least it's believed that, Hain or <clears throat> Sovak's brother Hain was poisoned by one of the people here. So this guy gets into the car and starts driving around La Serena trying to run everybody down while all these gangsters, these Iotians, are trying to shoot him with Tommy guns. So it just made for kind of a fun visual if you can just kind of picture that on this little small deck of this freighter. This guy, Frankie, driving this car around while it's being shot at by all these 1920s gangsters while they're having an art auction in space. So it's kind of a, it's a very fun visual. So they, they did do a lot of, I, there's a lot of stuff that really made me laugh that way. They do get control and they manage to, they manage to knock him out. Uh, but unfortunately, the car is wrecked in the process. Uh, so basically that part of the story ends with Rios getting nothing. Nothing at all. But alone again in space, he manages to solve the mystery. And we get to bring back another character and talk about another old episode. So kind of out of the blue here, they th <laughs> they throw in an old character, uh, Marta Betanitis. And she was from, it was, I think the Picard episode, or it was the Next Generation episode Tapestry. And she's now an admiral and is kind of looking for, looking to speak with Rios because she was an old friend of uh, Rios's old captain. So this is kind of a strange chapter that's just kind of thrown in there, but I do, I do like the connection that it gets. Uh, but just continuing on with the name story, now uh, Ledger has actually taken up work with Fajo in Fajo's uh, main mountain, and they're trying to kind of look at this Chang parch. That's fun to say, this Chang parch, and uh, solve the mystery of it. Because there is more to it than it just being a piece of art. And, and that's why everyone is kind of after it a little bit more. So they're trying to look at this chain. They're, you know, figure out what's going on with this chain parch. Uh, <clears throat> now, during all this happening, Rios starts putting the whole thing together. So by the time that uh, he actually is, uh, he's got the whole thing figured out. He knows that... Uh, it was <clears throat> Fajos that sent everybody all along and kind of started this whole thing so that he could find this this thing in the end. <clears throat> but uh, 
he gets a call from Ledger, who is kind of you know working with Fachos. And of course, this is when you get the big evil turn from Fachos. So he uh, <clears throat> he catches Ledger talking to him and is very upset. And then he turns around and he shoots his little Romulan friend with his disruptor because that's the kind of bad guy that he is. And then he locks Ledger away and basically says, "Okay, Rios, you've got seven days to come and save her. Otherwise, she's dead." And you better bring uh, <clears throat> bring the real thing. So now it's time for him to do his cunning rescue plan. So this is, uh, I would say, maybe like the big action sequence of the book. Or, and it's really cool. He activates you know all of his emergency holographic programs. So you've got Emil, Enoch, Ian, Mr. H, and Emmett all coming on board. So, I mean, that's when it really gets kind of fun. So anyway, he's got to activate all of his emergency holographic programs. He's got navigation. Uh, I think that's Enoch. He's got weapons. That's Emmett. He's got Ian in engineering. He's got Emil, who's the doctor, and Mr. Hospitality, the hospitality one. So they're, they're all activated, and they're all part of this great plan to assault Kivos Fajas' planet and his mountain and uh, save Ledger. And kind of one of the cool things is that he was inspired to do this kind of partially bef just before this scene uh, by hanging out in Stovo Core and having Kalos tell him, you just need to do a great deed. So this is, I guess, his great deed he's doing here. So uh, this is another thing that it's a, it made for a very fun visual in the book for sure. So they go down and they're making an assault on his planet. And in order to get through, they have a plan to convince the convincers, who are the Iotians uh, kind of gang of ships, to fight each other. Through, so through some deception, they are able to do that uh, kind of easily, because these guys are not the uh, sharpest knives in the drawer, I would say. And uh, they are able to deceive them, and they are able to get through, get down to the planet, and everybody is kind of busy fighting each other. So they get down to the planet, and here's their plan. They've got their car loaded up. So picture Star Trek First Contact, Captain Picard flying out <laughs> in his little thing uh, so he can go driving around that planet in the beginning. Uh, that's kind of what happens here. So Rios drives out of La Serena in his rebuilt car, which has been loaded up with manure, of all things, so they can blow a hole in this shield just long enough to beam out Ledger. So he's barreling down at 120 kph through this desert. Um, and in the last moment, they whoop, beam him out, blow a hole in the shield, and beam her out of there. And what is she doing but hanging on to a big old pile of books? <laughs> I always like that. Every time we see this girl, she's like stealing books. She's like, I'm going to get all these books and steal them. So she, uh, she's beamed out looking haggard, but she steals steal a nice big pile of books. I guess some of his, uh, Fajos's most, uh, expensive collection so they, they kind of got him there in the end and they get her out of there so now the final part of the book is to solve what is this chang part what does it mean what is it pointing to and it is actually pointing to star trek 6 so basically uh this is kind of like a backstory to the conspiracy that, that happened in star trek 6 so that was kind of cool that, that that's how they built up to that. It turns out that Parch actually uh, invited all of those conspirators from that movie to her secret planet, uh, not knowing what they were actually planning to do. And in being part of that, she was so ashamed that kind of she went into hiding after that. And it turns out that her brother is actually Duke Javen. And that's why he is trying to do what he does, fixing all these planets, because he was actually once a mining company on Praxis. So that things start coming together there at the end, and you're probably like, what are you even talking about, man? Well, you know, go read the book, because the book is really good. And I am certainly leaving out a ton of really, 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 really good stuff that is in there. But... Let's just kind of go over the main, I would say, the main plot points. Or at least what hit me the most in the book. And I am going to leave one secret unturned. One secret unturned in this, okay? I'm not going to bring it up at all. 
but I will say uh, Fajo is a jerk. So he starts out in the book, you know, he, he's, he's kind of maybe funny, maybe, but, you know, if you go back and you watch the TNG episode, The Most Toys, this guy is a bad guy. And he proves it by the end of this. He's a bad guy. And he ends up behind bars in the end, which is good. Sovak. <clears throat> now, Sovak, he doesn't get what he was looking for, but he does get to go back to the manure farm. So, hey, that's at least something. Boss Arca actually does get a closing. She gets a minor epilogue where she now is the runner of a 1920s style bar on Risa. So kind of the, the perfect finish for her, I would say. Now, as for our hero, Chris Rios uh, and Ledger. So those are the two main characters in the book. So in the end, it does turn out that uh, Ledger, through her, all of her dealings, is able to basically hand over La Serena to Chris and also handed over with a bit of an upgrade. So she is the one that has the mermaid painted on the outside of it. Just kind of her like final departing gift, along with a kiss uh, to Captain Rios. So the story does end kind of there with her walking away. Uh, and I would actually like to see another Rios and Ledger book in the future. That would be a lot of fun because both, I, th by the end of the book, the rapport between them both was good. He had actually started to kind of pick up some of her dialogue and language, which was really funny. Uh, so it was really fun. Uh, one of the little tie-ins here, of course, to Picard is that some of the books that Ledger had rescued from Kivos Faja at the end, uh, in one of those was actually a very rare Dixon Hill book. And as a present, uh, Rios sent it off to Picard uh, because he was offered just a little bit of advice that helped him earlier in the book. And uh, right at the end of the book, there was a little bit of an epilogue with Picard, who was very excited to be sent this and uh, kind of sit down and read this kind of lost mystery novel. And that was actually pretty cool. So, I mean, I guess it's okay they got Picard on it. They, they did throw him in there for a little bit right at the very end. Now, uh, I guess what are the main themes of this book that I saw? Uh, books. Man, books, man, books are great. Books are brought up in this book a lot. And I've said book a lot. But uh, seriously, they uh, it's kind of a main plot point in every single chapter of the story how books are, are doing something to change somebody. Uh, Ledger does some reading, which changes her character. Of course, Rios reads a lot of philosophy, uh, definitely changes his character throughout the book. So books books are great read more books um, conspiracy so a lot of this was about trying to cover up a conspiracy and what people were willing to do to to do that and, and in the end um, I like what Rios was able to do to to put that to an end so that nobody else had to get hurt and just his arc in in total from where he started uh, to where the book ended was great I mean he basically started as a drunk and uh, that's how he created those five holograms. So uh, an amazing bender, he went on, created those five crazy holograms, which would make, I think, for an awesome short track someday. So if you're listening to Paramount Plus, man, do that one. That would be fun. But uh, for me, I guess his journey throughout the book was, was the main part of it. And then also Ledger's journey as well, who kind of started out as uh, maybe just a just some kind of weird mobster with strange dialogue uh, in the end was just a really well-liked character who I just wanted to see more of. And, you know, little little hints of Raffi, little hints of Picard in there to kind of tie it in to everything else. So uh, what this book did for me was made me very excited for Picard season two. Uh, I've seen some things from the trailer which made me extra excited involving uh, Chris Rios. And I won't give those away here for anyone who hasn't seen that, but I'm really looking forward to next Thursday and seeing, you know, what is new for Chris Rios. So, man, uh, if I had to give this book a score, 9 out of 10, this thing was excellent. Read it if you're interested in Star Trek because it is fun. So many fun callbacks and then I think maybe it's made me want to go back and watch probably four different episodes and I'm going to watch Star Trek 6 again, I think just to kind of re-experience those with uh, this little bit of backstory in mind now. So, yeah.
that's going to be all for tonight, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, next is probably going to be TNG novel number 12, Doomsday World. That should be fun. Uh, as always, live long and prosper, and we'll see you next time. Bye.